Hello, hello. This is Chris Jansen. My website is endevil.life. This is the End Evil Podcast. Welcome, freedom lovers, those who care about truth, and those who care about humanity and the future of humanity. This is our opportunity to make a difference in the world. This week, I'm putting together a series of slides, kind of put together from work from past weeks, and I'm going to share with you my thoughts about the majority and the majority rules. I'm, I'll be live every week on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern. I'd love for you to join me and invite other folks you know. If you find something in this episode that you um, cherish or like, feel free to share it. Use it any way you can. The ultimate goal here is just to get the word out to more people that freedom's important. Freedom's our priority, and it's what we need to be working on. You can check check out more of my work on andevil.life and more um, on onegreatworknetwork.com, where there's a lot of other amazing content creators and people that, you know, everything I learned, I learned from people that are, most of them are on the One Great Work Network. It's an incredible place. So check it out, folks. This podcast is dedicated to the book, The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke, which I discovered through the What on Earth is Happening podcast and Mark Passio. Thank you, Mark, for putting together the One Great Work Network and the What on Earth is Happening podcast that brought so many important things to the forefront of my mind and helped me reprioritize um, what's really important in my life and feel like I'm serving my purpose and being here and understanding why I'm here. And I think this can help a lot of other folks too. So if you haven't yet checked out the podcasts on what on earth is happening dot com, do that. And um, as I just said, one great work network dot com. Incredible resource. The end of all evil can be downloaded. If you just type in the end of all evil, it'll come up. I usually use the New Earth University. Downloaded it multiple times for free. That's really awesome. Thank you to the New Earth University for having that available. Uh, recently, I just read the whole book out loud, and I've been posting those um, readings on my website, endevil.life, but I still have more posting to do, and eventually I'll have the whole book in audio video form for you to check out soon enough. So check through the tabs on endevil.life to find more of my work. I also want to recommend an incredible experience I've been having for the last year, a uh, little over a year, um, and an uh, exciting opportunity to meet people, network, and learn about uh, how to be an entrepreneur and how to find your freedom in your life in the real physical world autonomy. This is the brain child of uh, Richard Grove and if you haven't looked at Richard Grove's work there's a lot to be looked at and you can check out Grand Theft World podcast that's uh, another one of his productions but autonomy is a great place to um, expand yourself and to level yourself up and start making these changes happen in the real world that we want to see. Those of us that are beginning to understand freedom and we really want it we got to find a way to make it happen. So I recommend checking out getautonomy.info backslash ignite as a good way to get started on that journey. So enough with the advertisements. I'll get to some of my content here. You know, the, the whole thought of ending evil to most people seems like a unattainable goal. In fact, some people will even say evil will never be ended. And I think part of that has to do with the way we're defining the word evil. When I, when I define the word evil, what I mean is the destruction of freedom. Evil are things that tear away at life, at the creative energy, things that destroy. And what we want to do is just stop doing those things, stop stealing, stop uh, being accepting of other people stealing. We have to learn to engage our self-defense and and know when something's not okay you know we don't allow someone just to walk to up to us and start ripping our clothes off of us or taking a wallet right out of our pocket 
right? But that's what goes on in the bigger picture in the way we live these days. And I'm going to talk about many of those things in this particular episode. We're going to talk about taxes, one of the ways that government steals. So the point of this slide is to point out that, yeah, it seems like an incredibly difficult task to end evil, but it's possible. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. What step have you taken today or yesterday or this week to help your fellow human be more free, to understand what freedom actually means? Well, there are a lot of things that we can be doing, you can be doing. Whoever you are listening to this show, there's more that you can be doing. And that's what I'm here to encourage you to do, is to take another step. Each little step every day adds up to the thousand mile journey and evil can be ended in our world. We can live in a world where we don't steal from one another and we don't permit stealing from others. And people behave in a really awesome way toward another. And when one person does just decide to try to bring evil, we immediately shut it down. It's like living and being healthy. It's possible. You don't have to live and be sick. You know, you can be healthy. So part of it is believing that it's possible, folks. The definition of freedom is the infinite value of the human being. The definition of evil is the destruction of freedom. Everything that is evil teaches people that they have limited value. So Jeremy Locke teaches us the importance of understanding our value. And obviously, if what Jeremy Locke says is true, then that means that most people don't understand their value, and that's why they allow themselves to fall into slavery and to fall into situations where other humans are being put into slavery. Slavery seems like so strong a word to some people, and they just can't swallow it. But we're going to find a way to explain you know, the difference between freedom and slavery. And part of what we're going to do in this episode is just go over how we have these discussions with people and how we put these things into words. Every time I myself speak about these concepts, it helps me the next time I talk to someone, it's just that much easier to go through these ideas and share them with somebody. So, you know, when you get to talking with somebody in, up front, remember it's really important to do, like as in the trivium, to start off by de defining your terms. A lot of times when people are hearing these terms, they're thinking of something other than what we're saying. So what am I saying when I say evil? Well, good is actions that are not ha harmful. Even right in the dictionary, it says, the definition of harm is physical or mental damage or injury. So when you do something that's hurting something that's alive or living, then you're causing harm. Harm is evil. Right? Taking away from the good. Destroying the freedom. That's evil. Any type of stealing. So it should be pretty basic stuff that we should all know. Harm basically can be defined in a series of words here like stealing, assault, trespassing, murder, lying, coercion, and rape. Those are all examples of different types of stealing. Things that humans can do to other humans and other living beings and that are wrong. You know, I'm not even getting into animals and nature right now. I'm just talking about human to human behavior. So let's just start with just that. I'm not saying it's not wrong to harm nature, but it is. But for the sake of this conversation and for the sake of having this conversation with others when we're talking about freedom and slavery and good and evil, let's talk about how we treat other humans just to keep to keep the that we're defining the same thing so we don't get confused about what we're talking about okay we're all caught in this time trap we're all i mean how many of you have felt in the last year overwhelmed or underpaid or exploited why is that is it your fault that you're caught in this time trap who created this time schedule that we're using why can't we change it why do we all have to stick to the same time schedule if it, it's, you know, so silly in many cases? Well, there's a lot more to it. It's all tied up in this whole tapestry of what is confining us and making us feel overwhelmed and underpaid and exploited. There's a lot to it that causes that feeling. That causes the feelings of complacency, of passivity, of boredom. You know, these, these e equate to irritability. 
and feeling moody and unproductive. These feelings um, come from a place of not understanding who we are and why we're here on this planet, what we're doing. This is something that's been hard for me to realize. And as I come to realize that I'm not serving my purpose fully, yeah, I'm doing some good things in my life. You know, I was a father. I was raising my kids. I was going to work every day, doing the things I should do. But there was something missing. Something wasn't right. I still felt frustrated. And I'm not saying when you realize that you're on your true path and you're doing your purpose, there's not going to be any frustration. There is. But it's different when you're confident about what you what you know to be true, not just what you believe, what you know. And so I would challenge you to ask yourself do you really care about what you're doing with your time because if you're not you shouldn't be doing it and there are things that I'm doing on my day-to-day -day life that I don't care as much about as I should and I'm trying actively to change that and one of the ways I'm trying actively to change that is by building this podcast and reaching out to folks like you and saying hey look we can work together on this the more of us that are working together on this the better that we can do the ultimate goal here is to help others understand the importance of freedom. Right now, the majority of human beings don't understand what freedom is. We've never experienced it. The majority rules, okay? That's the that's this name of this episode because that is the way that people think, that it's okay to live by majority rule. And I'm here to say that's not the best way to do things because uh, the majority is always going to smash the minority. Slavery, defined in the dictionary, is severe toil, hard work, drudgery. Um, the activity of legally owning other people who are forced to work or obey you. So many of you might say, oh, no one owns me. I own myself. Well, is everything you're doing during the day completely of your free will? Or a lot of the things you're doing because you feel under compulsion? Okay, well, paying bills like and paying taxes and and paying insurance a lot of these things are mandated and forced upon you you're born into a world that requires these things and people will say to me if you don't like it go away move to another country well I was born here and I have every right to be here and that is a natural right not a right that's given by some person of authority so slavery is something also to be looked at and understood that there's many gradations of slavery. Think about even the type of people that, that we conjure in our head. When we say the word slavery, people usually think of the most recent example in history was right here in America where there were black people being owned by, by white people primarily. And But even in that situation, many of the people that were owned still had freedom to do things on their own and make certain decisions on their own and have family and walk around not in chains all the time so they weren't the same level of slavery that's you know someone being dragged by a chain and we're not quite that same level of slavery no we're under what's called debt slavery slavery by compulsion and we're slaves to our own in our own mind to this ideal this false ideal of authority and it's really screwing up our ability to act as normal human beings and to have a world without evil or stealing because slavery is a type of stealing and requiring you to pay uh, a third or half of every penny you make to go to somebody else's needs or wants is a type of slavery that's that's taxing somebody you can even hear it when we say it oh that's really taxing me yeah, if someone's taking your energy from you without your permission, whether you like it or not, by violence, that is a form of slavery. And that's not what we want to have in our world. We need to not allow it. And if we all don't allow it, if the majority of human beings don't allow it, then it can't exist because the majority rules, right? But I'm here to say also that Making decisions just based on majority is is an unbalanced equation. It's always going to lead to problems because there's always going to be the other percentage of people that are getting the shaft. And here's an example of how that happens in our in our environment in the world we live in through evil work. Evil work is funded 
through money that's taken through from you by your taxes. And then it's funneled into things like courtrooms and police cars and jail cells. Now you may agree or you may not agree with jailing as a way to handle bad things or um, ticketing as a way to slow people down on the road or courtroom with all these complex rules and books, you know, and calling that right. You may or may not agree with these methods, but I'm going to say that if any of these methods require coercion or violence, they must not be very good methods because that's like the kindergarten way of dealing things. When you're not smart enough to make your point, you force somebody to listen to you. And we've allowed that on a mass scale. And it's because our minds have been sheltered from the truth and the truth has been hidden from us that every little thing you do in life matters and that even if you're wearing a, a badge or a costume or you think that it's okay for you to kidnap somebody or to ticket somebody or to take someone's money because they didn't do things the way that you think they should be done you're still in the wrong if you're doing those things because the universe has its own set of rules and laws and that's what we've become to define as natural law. Natural law is two words put together and this phrase has been coined um, by Mark Passio, but through history many other people have used this phrase. Not all of them have used it exactly the same. You know, like there's a Cain Aquinas who used it kind of in his own way and in a, rel in a religious kind of setting. And then we had Thomas Paine who used natural law. There's many writers and speakers who have used the term natural law. But what do we mean by natural law in, in this sense is the pre-existing law of the universe. That there is good and there is evil. There is them taking something that's not yours. And we don't need a bunch of paperwork or any kind of technology to prove that that's wrong. Even if you were the first caveman and I was the second caveman and I came and took your club from you, it would be very clear that that was wrong because it was your club and you had it first. <laughs> Unless you took it from me, in which case I'm trying to take it back, right? So that should be really simple. We shouldn't need courtrooms and police officers to enforce something that is pre-existing, that has always been here since the beginning of time, since the beginning of humans. Here's a quote by Albert Schweitzer. Man must cease attributing his problems to his environment and learn again to exercise his will. His personal responsibility in the realm of faith and morals. I like this quote because it's a good reminder that, you know, it's not always easy doing the right thing. We always want to blame our childhood or blame the trauma we've been through or blame society, blame, you know, all these years of television for why our brains are screwed up and why we can't do the right thing or why we make these mistakes. I don't want to live in a place of guilt or fear, and neither do I want you to live in those places. But I want us to recognize and see the truth for what it is. That the world has become, in many ways, a pretty ugly place. doesn't mean there's not beauty. We can see beauty right in nature, as in this picture. And we can see beauty in every human being. Most human beings I've ever encountered, part of them really wants to be a good person. And they really want to do the right thing. It's very rare, the psychopath who doesn't have cares, who doesn't have feeling or empathy. And that comes from, um, I think, from extreme, extremely damaging trauma that causes a person to become that way. Does it exist naturally? I'm not sure. That I can't say that I know for sure. But I will say that I know for sure that there are psychopaths in the world, and the current society we have supports the psychopathic element and actually raises the psychopath to be the leaders. Because... Someone who doesn't care about others is um, really doesn't mind pushing a button that sends a bomb to kill a whole bunch of people or sending an army to go defeat a bunch of other people because they've lost empathy and they've lost understanding of what it means to have loved ones die around you. Because when you don't care about anyone, you don't care about loved ones, then that doesn't even scare you. Why would it bother you? Even if your own family died, you don't care. That's the way some people are in this world. Why they're that way, I think, has to do with um, many people supporting their evil actions and acting like it's okay, and it being uh, this trauma being repeated over and over and over. So 
As Lysander Spooner said, a hero from U.S. history, if taxation without consent is not robbery, then any band of robbers must have only to declare themselves a government and all their robberies are legalized. You know, if you think about Lysander Spooner's logic, any anybody doing something wrong could just all of a sudden put on a costume or have a badge and say, oh, I'm part of the government, and all of a sudden it would be okay, right? And that's kind of the type of logic we've accepted on the whole. And part of the solution is to stop accepting that logic and s stop accepting that logic and start understanding and then learn how to explain to others why that's wrong. Um, history is one of the ways we can use to describe to people. Learn about Lysander Spooner. Tell other people the story. That's a good conversation starter. Hey, have you ever heard of Lysander Spooner? Who's that? Oh, he's the guy that tried to start his own mail service that was in competition with the U.S. Postal Service. And he was shut down by the government because they didn't like losing. <laughs> and he actually wrote books and said some very intelligent things that should be learned by folks. So the New World Order, that's basically what we're concerned with here. That's um, um, right on the top of the Bible of the dollar bill. It, the words can be translated to mean basically New World Order. We've heard presidents like uh, Reagan and Bush who keep using this term over and over. What they're talking about is a secret guild of, of banking families that go back and have been working for years on trying to own the world. And they're trying to create the world order that they want. And many of us, just by being complacent and not worrying or caring or being ignorant of what's going on, are actually supporting this new world order because the money that they're taking from us is what they're using to enslave us in their Borg cube. Their, their technological plan for a technocracy and a future where you really don't want, none of us want. Some people have drawn this picture here that shows the pyramid. And where are we in this picture? We're not doing so good. We're the average human beings. People who care are at the very bottom of the pyramid. There's a structure in place that's been, you know, being put in place for a very long time. Now is our opportunity, now that we know about it, now that um, so much of this stuff is available, that we could start doing something about it. We could start changing this dynamic. You know, at the time, many times in history, people didn't have available to them the information and the data that we have now to find out all these answers and to find out the names of these groups and these organizations that are um, pulling weight in the world around us. Think about how much money is thrown into propaganda, how much money is thrown into convincing you that you're sick, there's something wrong with you, that you're not valuable. What's more valuable to governments is the government itself, is the organization itself, is that you stay in order, that you do what you're told that you pay your taxes, that you vote. As long as you keep doing these things, you keep supporting the ones at the top who think they're separated from us, the psychopathic element of the world. What we are is slaves. We're debt slaves. You, you're born, you go to school, you work your butt off, and like close to half of everything you make just goes to this whole New World Order structure, this pyramid scheme. And it's all about authority. It's all about the Hegelian dialectic. If you haven't looked into George Frederick Hegel, George Wilhelm Frederick Hegel, to give the full name. You know, he's a philosopher of note, and he came up with this theory of, which is actually a theory of solving problems that can be applied in a positive way, but it's being used on us in a negative way because we don't know what it is and we don't understand it. And the Hegelian dialectic is basically a synthetic solution. It's um, Let me read what it says on this slide from a Mark Passio slide. The synthetic solution to these conflicts can't be introduced unless those being manipulated take a side. 
that will advance the predetermined agenda. So the Democrats and the Republicans are two sides of the same coin. It says to conf effectively control a nation, allow them a little hope by offering them a choice of which two parties they would like to submit their will to. Encourage debate only within the limited scope of the two-party system. This will keep going round in circles, arguing between themselves while you implement your agenda, regardless of which party is in power. It doesn't matter if it's Pepsi or Coke. Either way, you're drinking the punch. You're drinking the, you're drinking the sugar and the, the syrup. And if you're drinking the syrup, you're not going to be healthy. So most channels on the television <laughs> that you tune into are one side or the other of the same coin, two wings of the same bird. There is massive amount of money going to keep you in this endless loop of arguing with ourselves. And the things going on since COVID are perfect examples of divisive issues that make us fight against one another. Do I get caught up in them? Yeah, sometimes I do. It's frustrating, but at least I see it for what it is. And I come back to the important points, and that's what we need to do in these conversations with people when we get to talking about freedom is bring it back to freedom. That's what really matters, freedom or slavery. Whether it's uh, Pepsi or Coke, it really doesn't matter. You know, whoever they're going to start putting in place for the next position of authority is most likely another psychopath. Probably someone who's done terrible things to children because that's one of the ways they leverage these people. Here's a quote from Aldous Huxley in his book, The Brave New World. One believes things because one has been conditioned to believe them. So how do we begin to condition ourselves to not be such fools and not keep falling for the same mistakes? Well, we start thinking differently. We start watching different things and listening to different things. We look for people that are doing this work because they care about doing this work. They're not getting paid. You know, that's one thing that really drew me to Mark Passio's work. He put it all online for free. Never charged for any of it. Yeah, you can go buy a, his video on his website. But, or you can just watch it for free on a multitude of different places. There's very few people that work that hard on putting their work out there just because they care about freedom. And that's what we're supposed to be doing here. That's part of what this life experience is about, is freedom. You're born into this body and you have these hands and these eyes and the, all these incredible, valuable facilities. The end of what we can do is not even known. The possibilities are endless what the human body can do. And yet we're confined to these little boxes and driving around in these little caskets of cars and going to these J-O-Bs, which in many ways are often drudgery and taking us away from our purpose. And now we're living in a world where people are being fragmented and split apart in so many ways because they're falling for the dialectics and because they're conditioned into trauma-based thinking, which is undervaluing what you are, which is something amazing, astounding. We're lucky to have these bodies. We're, we're being played like pawns in this world. And there's so many of us, all we have to do is work together. All we have to do is understand morality. If one person's not trying to constantly get one over on their neighbor or do, you know, do better just to prove they can and instead we're lifting one up one another up then all of a sudden we're not pieces on the chessboard we're playing the game ourselves right now we're like the pieces and those hands are like the psychopaths that are playing with us the sooner we realize the sooner we can start fixing that dynamic and um, the reason it works so well on us is because trickery is tricky uh, think about, have you ever gone to a magic show and not been impressed? And part of the reason a magic show is called a magic show is because they're able to trick you. Well, it's the same exact thing when it comes to authority. All through history, authority has found all kinds of tricky ways to trick people and keep them subdued and keep them doing what they want them to do. That's how slavery works. If you don't keep your slaves confused and in a state of not understanding what's going on, then they start getting smart and they say, hey, why do you get things that I don't get, right? 
And that's the time that we're at in history where we're supposed to be realizing that we're being tricked, that we're being played. It's really obvious once you can see it, once you're looking for it. But when you don't realize what's happening, it's extremely difficult to see. You're physically keeping yourself from seeing it because it's too scary, because it would undermine your belief structure. And many of us do survive from a state of belief structure. And that's what's so important to understand is that all of our actions are based on our thoughts. And our thoughts are based on our belief system in so many cases. I personally am trying to get away from using beliefs as a structure for my thinking. When we begin to do that, it's difficult because we've been trained our whole life to do that. Believe in government. Believe in yourself. Well, I mean, believe in yourself is the probably one statement that m might make some sense. Because that's the way that I think believing should be used. Is kind of like faith. Is... Um, Having confidence in yourself that you can figure something out, something that is currently unknown. And some people really struggle with the fact that there even is a such thing as truth. And because it seems so difficult, because you can, uh, what I hear people say often about the internet, oh, you can find two sides to any issue. Just type it in on the internet and you'll see, you know, so many good arguments for either side. You might as well just give up. There's no point in knowing anything because there's too much information out there. Well, there is a lot of information, and there are people on both sides of issues, but there are also ways of discerning and learning tricks. Otherwise, there would not be a such thing as magicians if there wasn't a way to learn magic. And part of that is to understand words and to understand that trickery is tricky, and you need to be looking for it. And when people point it out, they're usually not just saying it just to scare you. They're trying to warn you in many cases. But it's up to you to tell the difference and discern when that's true or not. Is someone making money by tricking you? That's usually a good question. That's one, one of the types of discernment that I tend to use is who's making money off of this. Like the news, for instance, always like to bring up something really scary like there's a new sickness and you might die from it. A lot of people are dying from it. And, and that gets you going because emotions, we get wrapped up in emotions. I talked about this with Rick Zimmer recently in a podcast called Mind Power. You can look that up on endevil.life. We talk about hypnotism and how people get caught um, thinking in ways that are actually manipulated by other people. Oops, I skipped one thing. This book here um, is an important book to look into. It's called None Dare it, Call It Conspiracy. The reason this is a great book to look into is because this book describes how historically and currently governments are using um, the similar tactics and really showing how communism leads right into tyranny and that all these um, different styles of government are really all just funneling us back to the same place, which is what I'm calling slavery. So check out None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen for some more details about um, facts and details about our country and recent history that will help explain how we're all being subverted <coughs> into a Borg-like system, collectivism. There would be no game of chess if the pawns refused to play. It's really up to us. Our decision does matter. We are valuable. And we can make a difference. Here's a fun little um, video I picked out, out of a movie I watched recent, re watched recently. Great movie, one of my favorites, The Fifth Element. And in this part, you see something very interesting where um, the evil guy, so often in these movies, is the one that tells the truth and shares this important information. And in this scene, Zorg does that. I'll go ahead and play it for you, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Hold on, I'll make it full screen for you. All right, here we go. Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg. It's nice to see you again, Father. Ah, I remember you now. The so-called art dealer. Well, I'm glad you got your memory back. 
because you're going to need it. Where are the stones? I don't know. And even if I did know, I wouldn't tell somebody like you. Why? What's wrong with me? I tried to save life. But you, honey, seem to want to destroy it. Oh, Father. You're so wrong. which you so nobly serve, comes from destruction, disorder, and chaos. Now, take this empty glass. Here it is, peaceful, serene, boring. But if it is, destroy it. Look at all these little things. So busy now. Notice how this one is useful. What a lovely ballet ensues, so full of form and color. Now... Think about all those people that created them. Technicians, engineers, hundreds of people who will be able to feed their children tonight so those children can grow up big and strong and have little teeny wind children of their own and so on and so forth. Thus adding to the great chain of life. So you see here in this clip how Zorg is trying to justify what he's doing. He shows how when you destroy something, destruction and chaos are ways of making things better because it gives all these jobs for people to come clean up your, your mess you've made. And this is kind of what we see happening so often in our environments around us. It's called disaster capitalism. See, those who have lots of power and resources, if they know what's going to go wrong, ahead of time because they're part of the planning committee that plans a problem then it's easy for them to come in and um, you know look really good by cleaning up the mess and and, and um, giving everybody free money or giving everybody a solution to this problem and so this is the psychopath um, is being symbolized in the show by the Zorg character He's this crazy, insane person that doesn't care about destruction. He sees destruction as a great way to make money. And that's the world we're living in. That And people are just going along with it and falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker. So let's talk a little bit about the truth and lies. Lies prevail in modern culture. There's an acceptance of belief as a substitute for truth. There's a tolerance of abuse. Moral relativism has been normalized. A false reality substitution has been gradually imposed. There are souls unfulfilled on a mass scale. There's ego attachment seen as virtuous. Revenge is viewed as honor. Suffering and guilt are abundant. There's purposeful ignorance going on all around us. There's constant distractions. There's satanic ritual sacrifice. And there's moral soul sickness. And when I'm talking about satanic ritual sacrifice, you might think I'm only describing these secret things that go on in underground layers, but I'm also talking about stuff that's going on television every night, is murder one after another. When you sit there and watch people being murdered, even though it's being played on TV, your brain is experiencing this. And this is a ritual because you're doing it over and over and over. And if you're not aware of what you're watching and thinking about it as a conscious being, it becomes part of who you are. And think about how much we, um, you know, many people would look down on the Romans who would go see gladiators fight in the arena or people fight lions, or slaves being thrown to the lions, or people being hung. But really, that's the equivalent of what's going on on television in the modern age. We watch other people doing evil things and laugh at it or enjoy it like it's entertainment. But that actually is a form of ritual sacrifice that we're all being part of. So these aren't like happy things. These are all indications of a problem, of a sickness that needs to be healed and it's difficult to tell people that it's a difficult message to share with folks so how do we sugarcoat it I'm not exactly sure but I'm just 
showing you all the ways I've learned to talk and think about these issues and explain them. And maybe the more times I condition myself and practice to exercise my way of explaining the problems to people, perhaps it will make more sense. Perhaps I'll get better at doing it. That's my hope. And to share those things with you. And the more we do that, the better we're going to get at it. Separate fact from fiction. Take a moment to separate fact from fiction, nonfiction. Fiction from nonfiction. Keep in mind how heavily we're all influenced by the media, the television, and the movies. We all have to fight to not let it color our thoughts on how we perceive people around us. The stereotypes, fears, and prejudices pumped into our brains from Hollywood affect how we react, especially if we're not vigilant and attentive. I just um, mentioned a little bit ago my conversation with Rick Zimmer, and he actually very much agreed with my point about movies and television, how much of these shows that we watch and movies we've seen are embedded in our brains in different places. And when we think about our belief, you know, like I said, the belief system, how much of it is based on these fiction movies and how people react to things when we try to make judgments and decide what someone may or may not do. A lot of our fears and concerns are based on stuff we've seen on the television. It's very difficult to start separating our brain doesn't always know the difference and our subconscious doesn't always know the difference. We have to actively start looking at how we're making decisions and compare it to what's actually right. And what's right is not harm, not harming others, right? So this was just another depiction of, of how easily people can be tricked and when you're looking at something from a different perspective it can be manipulated. In reality things are very different than what we see on the media. When people are writing, you know, when you make a blog on your social media, like your Facebook post, and someone else gets in there and types whatever it is they want to say, sometimes a very hurtful thing to say, it's not the same way that same person would behave if they were discussing that subject with you in person. We all get away with things online because it's a place where you're at, you're, you're, um, it's not reality. It's not complete reality. It's separate from who you are, your avatar on on this um, virtual plane. And you know, it does really matter what we do there, of course. And we just have to understand that there's a big difference between what's on the television and what's happening in real life, and how we treat people really does matter. Here's a big news flash: the majority is wrong. The majority's been wrong for a long time. Don't believe just because everyone else does. A lot of people thinking a certain way or seeing things a certain way does not make it correct. That's not the definition of truth, as the majority believes it. And we have this whole idea, you know, kind of like voting, which is one of the topics that many people have a hard time when I say it's voting is evil, it's wrong. They think, no, you know, we've been really conditioned to think that democracy is the best way. If we vote, then then it gives everybody a chance to to put their opinion out there. But the truth is, like I said before, 51% of the group is just ruling over the other 49% if we believe in the majority rules way of doing things. So what if that's only three people? You know, what if you were going out to eat with three people and one person really didn't want to have Chinese food and the other two did and we just based it on majority? Well, that one person just has to suffer? And that's ridiculous. There's a lot of different places to eat and the three people can find something that they all like. Maybe there's a place that serves Chinese food and Mexican food and they can go there or they're both right next to each other and they can both get their food separately and eat together outside. It would make much more sense than the two people just telling the third person that, nope, you have to eat Chinese food, like it or not, because otherwise you're not coming with us, or we're going to lock you up in a cell. So don't believe the majority. Have you ever heard of the Overton window? This is a description of the way that the range of acceptable ideas gets pushed and moved over time. This happens in the political scene. 
by bringing up certain subjects, by bringing up certain questions, it keeps people looking in a certain direction and it keeps their mind focused on a certain set of ideas. This is kind of like how the Hegelian dialectic works as well. By presenting certain problems, it forces your mind to think on a certain playing field. Now everybody's concerned with how healthy they are or not really what we should be concerned with is how healthy we are and how well we're exercising and taking care of ourselves and eating and all these type of things and, and that we're on our spiritual path and that we're doing the right thing and that we're living as moral human beings. And those things would help us be healthy and that we're um, spending time doing generous things for other people and kind thing for other, and that would give us this abundant energy. But instead, you know, society will have us arguing with each other about whether we've had this vaccine or not and whether we're allowed to go to work or not or whether we're allowed to go over to someone's house because you never know, you might get them sick. See, these fears are being used to control us and push us in a, in a, ra in a direction because so many people tend to think that what everybody thinks must be right because it's too hard to think differently. Well, it's getting too late to think that way because there there are there is a such thing of truth and it can be discovered and you're not going to discover it unless you work hard on doing that so what does the new world or order want it wants you to fight and disagree and keep battling each other on all kinds of stupid little points well it can you know it continues being the puppet master and taking a large percentage of everything you do so Basically, we've become Borg. You know, we're just all um, minions of the hive mind at this point. Those of us who aren't resisting and fighting back have been assimilated, and they've become ass, asses because they don't uh, recognize their own value. It's like spitting on the creator who's given you this wonderful body and this wonderful opportunity to be free, and instead you choose to... Um, you know, fill your body with poisons and allow your body to be fitted with technological things made by some authority who wants to control you and cover up your mouth and cover up your face and look through these lenses. You know, it just goes worse. This is where we're headed, you know, is be just being like clones in a box like in the movie The Matrix. One of my heroes from history... Nazi concentration camp survivor Viktor Frankl, who wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning, said, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of s circumstances. To choose one's own way. This is the great gift of creation, the great gift of life. When you're born, you have the ability to start making choices how you want to use your body, how you want to use your mind, and how you want to use your spirit. This is your opportunity to do that. So Viktor Frankl faced some of the worst things a human can face, being put into a concentration camp, being forced to do things um, by the Nazis, being watching his whole family get killed one by one from the Nazis. And what did he do with that? He turned it around and he wrote a book teaching other people about what's most important in life. And that's finding your purpose. And understanding that your purpose is really the most deepest desire that you have as a human being. And when you start working on that, you start finding freedom. Even in a position of being in a jail, even when someone has their um, authority has managed to cage you and push you into a corner, you can still find more freedom than most by not allowing your mind to ever be beaten, by never giving up. And that's the type of resilience we're going to need in the coming years because of the way things are going. The only people who are mad at you for speaking the truth are people who are living a lie. So keep that in mind. Uh, many times those of us who are fighting for truth, who don't want to do as we're told, you know, whether it's not wearing a mask or not getting a vaccine or um, not wanting to bomb terrorists, you know, whatever it is, you're going to get made fun of. 
people are going to ostracize you. And you need to keep in mind that these are people who are living a lie. These are liars. These are people who are encouraging evil, right? And that doesn't mean we want to hurt them if they're not hurting us. It does mean we want to defend ourselves from them, yes. And it does mean we want to educate them, try to help them understand that what they're doing is wrong. Just like we do with children. We try to explain to them. We try to teach them. Most of the world is children right now. Most of us haven't grown up. We're living as little kids. And the, the littlest kids with the biggest tempers are often the boss. It's just the way things are in this backwards world that we're living in. Jeremy Locke said, As a human being, you are very special. You are unlike the minerals, the plants, or the animals of earth. Nothing commands the abilities of intelligence like you. Nothing else has such complete and total ambition to satisfy dreams. Nothing else has the desire or the thirst for knowledge that you possess. You are a human being, which is an amazing and awesome thing to be. One of the most amazing things about being alive and being on this earth is how connected we are to all life around us. This little slide I put together about interconnectedness, this is showing how the earth has become fragmented, that puzzle pieces are being pulled out. This is the disconnection and the fragmentation that the rulers of this earth, the social engineers, the psychopaths are trying to create. They don't want you to be able to see that we're all part of the same puzzle and that all of our edges connect and that we're all part of the same tree of life. When we become distracted from this understanding that we are all part of this web of life, we feel very disconnected and alone and scared. And that puts us in a place of um, being more easily manipulated by our emotions. Carl von Eckhartshausen said, advancing towards perfection, the true good is to aspire to a resemblance with divinity to advance towards unity between the creature and the creator. It's a kind of an obvious, when you think about it that way, an obvious thing from birth that it's so amazing that we are here in this flesh body, in this amazing earth that has so much complexity to it. There, There's obviously a lesson here for us to learn. You look at nature, you can see the perfection in it how it works all by itself. It doesn't have rulers in nature. There's no squirrel on top of the tree telling all the other squirrels what to do or you're going to get put in squirrel prison. Nope, squirrels just know what to do. They, they find their nuts and they hide them. Some of them survive, some of them don't, but the, but the whole system works together and it's all part of the same life system. So we humans have a lot to learn from the Creator. And we can learn a lot of that by watching nature and by seeing what how nature handles things. There's lessons in everything around us. Some Another thing to study to advance your psychology is to think about hermetic principles. Look into the occult. Look into the hidden knowledge from that's been written down. Books are an incredible thing. Why? That's why in history... Uh, regimes like Nazis want to burn books. That's why modern regimes of authority want to do censorship because there's a lot of knowledge to be gained in books. And so studying and learning is a great way to grow. And I highly recommend studying hermetics, the hermetic principles, the first principles. When you become grounded in your principles, think about it like laying a foundation for your house. You want a really strong foundation to build upon. You don't, and this is kind of the type of knowledge you need to build upon. It's to start with your spiritual and moral base, and then we build from there. Not the opposite, like the modern world wants you to believe in the physical world, and that you have to get money, and then you can do other things and be a philanthropist. But it's really the other way around. First, we need to build our inner self and our morals, and then we're able to go out in the world and do good and connect with others. We cannot live for ourselves alone. Our lives are connected by a thousand invisible threads. And along these sympathetic fibers, our actions run as causes and return to us as results. The universe 
brings us what we're looking for. If you analyze your own life with that eyeball of trying to understand what is it that you're supposed to learn, what am, where am I leading myself is a question I often ask myself. There's so many answers to be gained. All the little lessons and all the little things that happen to us in our day-to-day -day life are um, a cumulative answer from the universe to all the questions that we've led up to that we've asked up till now. This is a place of learning and understanding and finding our purpose. That's why we're here, folks. Moving towards the extremes of either polarity or intellect or emotion can act as a divisive force which holds us back from true care and right action. We must engage our willpower at an individual level to unite these polarizing forces. And it's never been more difficult than now. We care, you know, that's I see where people get caught in this, you know. If you're worried about your friends and family getting sick and dying and you care about them, that pulls at your heartstrings. Even when your mind is telling you, well, yeah, but just because I care about people doesn't mean I should necessarily trust these companies like Pfizer, who's like done the worst medical malpractice in history. Does it really make sense to do that? You know, and people are fighting with themselves. I don't, you know, because they're worried. They do care. But we can find our center. We can ground ourselves. And part of this is finding our purpose and looking at what really matters. And I would say what really matters is freedom. Don't be ignorant. Martin Luther King said, Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Just because you disagree with somebody doesn't mean you're necessarily right. You know, try to understand what other people are saying. Look into it. Look a little deeper. Don't give up easily. The universe rewards bravery. Take the initiative. Be the change you want to see. You are the hero that you've been waiting for. It's really all up, you know, up to each of us to do something about the situation we're in. You know, the real problem in the world the biggest thing going on is freedom or slavery. And anytime you get caught in a conversation or argument about some detail or some sidetrack little thing that's in the news, remember the real subject matter is freedom or slavery. And that's where we want to bring all our conversations back to. That's the lesson that people need to learn. That's what matters, freedom or slavery. And you are the key. Get out there, make some friends, make some connections, build your community, and look in the mirror to find the solutions. Because you are born of the Creator, and you have within you the power to change, and the power to be a better human being. So thank you folks for hanging out with me tonight, and listening to my presentation. You can see a lot more of this work at endevil.life. And at endevil.life, you can click on the Donate tab, and get yourself an End Evil t-shirt, which is a great way to contribute to the show and a great way to advertise out public. We'll be back next week for more on uh, the One Great Work Network, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a good week, folks. Get out there and end evil. One, two, three, four.